Fujifilm launched the X-T5 as a photography first camera, but in today's video, we're going to answer the question, can it shoot video? We're going to talk about high ISO, autofocus, dynamic range, and more. And make sure you watch until the end of the video because I will also announce the winners for the giveaway that I made for the 3000 subscribers on this channel. And without further ado, let's get started. The Fujifilm X-T5 comes with seven stop of IBIS, in-body image stabilization, which means that you will be able to use this camera to take handheld footage. And as you can see, IBIS doesn't mean that you will have a gimbal-like smooth footage, but it means that the X-T5 will be able to get rid of all the micro movements in your footage. I would say that the IBIS of the Fujifilm X-T4 and the X-T5 are pretty similar. So if you come from the X-T4, no huge change right here, only half a stop. I would also add that the little wobbles that we had on the X-T4 has been a little bit improved when it comes to sudden movement of your camera. And overall, the IBIS of the X-T5 is pretty good. Now, if you don't know what rolling shutter is, rolling shutter is basically the delay of the readout of the sensors that will cause straight lines to basically wave out when you're fastly moving your camera. The rolling shutter is pretty bad on the X-T5. So if you are planning on shooting fast moving objects and tracking them down by, with fast movement on, with your camera, I don't think that the X-T5 is made for you at all. I think that right now the best camera in the Fujifilm system for that is the X-H2S with a stack sensor. So overall the performance for rolling shutter is pretty bad on the X-T5. When it comes to high ISO performance, I have tested the X-T5 at different ISO values. While you can definitely see the noise in your image, the noise that you get look more like a filmic grain. Whenever you take a video at high ISO, let's say 12,800, you have kind of a grain in your shadows especially. So if this is important for you, make sure that you understand that. But overall for me, I think that the high ISO performance is here and that the noise added is not terrible at all. Let's talk about a big one now, autofocus. When it comes to the autofocus and the eye detection on the X-T5, I would say that the autofocus is much better than the X-T4. It is sticky, it finds its target. And in the test that I made, I would say that it worked fine for my use cases in video. However, you might want to adjust the custom settings for your use. Personally, I don't like having quick movement in my focus in video. So I usually set it to sensitivity zero and focus speed to minus four. Overall, I'm pretty satisfied with the autofocus of the X-T5, but even if you need a faster autofocus system, I still believe that the X-T5 is able to stick to its target and meet your need. I also made some tests at sensitivity zero and autofocus tracking speed at zero, and it was still able to keep up with my movements. Maybe I don't move that fast, but yes, the X-T5 is a big improvement over the X-T4 and its autofocus is reliable. Now in the X-T5, you also have the possibility to record in 4K HQ, 4K or 6.2K. Now 4K HQ and 6.2K have a crop factor of 1.23. But in the test that I made, I noticed that you definitely retain more details and more information within the 4K HQ. So if this is something that you need, the X-T5 allows you to have more information in there. Now, another important thing that the X-T5 brought with the X-H2 and the X-H2S is F-Log2. I made a few tests with F-Log and F-Log2, and overall, I'm pretty pleased with F-Log2. Compared to F-Log, I would say that the F-Log2 brings a little bit more magenta and is a bit truer to the skin colors. And you can definitely feel that there is more dynamic range. So if you're in need of that dynamic range, the F-Log2 is really good news for you. It's also really easy to work with and color grade. And I'm gonna try to experiment more and more with F-Log2 and let you know if I find anything interesting. So make sure you subscribe not to miss that. Speaking of color grading, I have shot several scenes in Shinjuku and I wanted to showcase a little bit what the X-T5 and the F-Log2 color profile could do. So here are some footage that I took and color graded to showcase what you can do with this camera.
All right, so before we move to my conclusion, thank you, thank you, thank you so much because we reached 3,000 subscribers on this channel. And I can only thank you for that. For those of you who entered the giveaway, you already received a little mail with a little present from me. But now let's move on to the winners of the giveaway of the TT Artisan and 7 Artisan Lens. To decide the winners, I basically generated a random numbers between one and the number of participants. And with those two numbers, I chose two participants on the list. So I just want to say congratulations to both Yassin Dell and Stefano Bonato. I already contacted them by email and they allowed me to give their name online. So shout out to them and congratulations to them. So Yassin, you won the 7 Artisan 7mm f2.8 and Stefano, you won the TT Artisan 70mm f1.4. So thank you so much for participating and yeah, just a round of applause to them. I will be shipping those lens this week and hopefully you can just create some great images with them. Now let's move on to the conclusion of this video. So yes, the Fujifilm X-T5 is a photography first camera. However, it has improved autofocus. It has F-Log, F-Log 2, the introduction of 4K HQ and also 6.2K that can help you create horizontal and vertical content if you're into that. All those tools make it a great camera for video. However, if you're like me and you're a content creator that film yourself, or you need to film fast moving subject, right? The X-T5 might not be the camera that you want for video. Personally, I keep shooting my videos on the X-T4 because I can directly have a feedback on what I'm shooting right now, looking at the flipping screen. However, for my paid shoot, I will definitely use the X-T5 for my video camera because I can be behind the camera and focusing on what I'm capturing. I don't shoot anything that goes extremely fast, so the X-T5 is definitely a camera that I can personally both use for video and photography. There are still plenty of things that I want to test out with the X-T5. For example, it's raw output with ProRes and Blackmagic, right? There's so many more things that I want to create about this camera because you can do so much with it. Let me know what you think about the X-T5 for videography in the comments. Let me know also if you have any questions when it comes to its performance or any questions on the settings in this video. And if you've missed it, check out this video right here where I talk about the X-T5 versus the X-T4 for photography. See you there.